Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. It's your boy, Mr. Mercy. It's your man, Cool Breeze. And this is Sin Radio Cash, episode number two, man. Oh, how am I sounding out there, all cool? Yeah, your sound sounds good, man. Sounds good. How, how do I sound on, on, on that side? Looking good, looking good, okay, man. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. so, uh, man, how, how was the weekend, bro? It was good, man. Just um, staying busy, staying active. Um, just did, did um, some writing, kind of went out. I went to this event that my boy was having. It was like an art event, and it was pretty tight, man. So, um, what what's the what was the uh, do you remember the name of the event? It was um, well, my boy, his name is El Motas. Shout out to him. So it was a event. It was like a pretty much um, an art show called the um, the Red Rabbit Hole. That's what it was. And then pretty much it was just a bunch of artists that came out and um, showcased their graffiti and stuff because he has a spot where he had a whole bunch of uh, different artists come in and just do graffiti all in the basement and stuff like that. So he's trying to set it up as an art scene and it was the first um, of its kind at that location. And it was good, man. It, the, the reception went over well. And, um, you know, so now people are seeing this spot and they're like, whoa, you know, this would be a good spot so we can host some shows, you know, um, pretty much music venue, uh, art shows, whatever you want to use the space for, and that's pretty much what it is, man. So shout out to my boy, El Mota, for being a gracious host. No doubt. So that, was pretty, that was pretty dope. So, you know, it was cool. All right, man. Well, man, um, I don't want to hold these folks or so anybody tuning in for the first time. This is Sin Radio Cash. Uh, you know, we're a podcast where we discuss a lot of different topics. We like to go a little bit more in depth than uh, most of the other podcasts. And we try to bring our listeners a lot of value, a lot of information. Mm, so, right. Uh, show, uh, we're going to be discussing the probably the hottest topic right now in the uh, urban community. Mm. And unless you've been on the rock, uh, everybody's talking about this R. Kelly uh, docuseries, mm. uh, Lifetime Network. Uh, called surviving R. Kelly. Right. Uh, I'm not sure if you. Uh, I'm. I'm sure you got a chance to look at some of it. I. I. De- I definitely did. Yeah. I. I, I caught uh, two episodes of this uh, docu series, and it was. Uh, There's a lot of information that I didn't know, and I would say it was a lot of information if you're a person who's on the outside, you wouldn't have known this information because this is a lot of. Uh, people from R. Kelly's camp or who were around them at various points of time that would, um, you know, just, well, they're now coming forward with a lot of information that they've been holding on to for like years since like, I would say the majority of his lifetime, you know, if not that, then up until like the 90s, the early 90s, up until now. So it's just interesting to, to see what different people's perspectives are on this topic. And it's just more so enlightening and, and, and shocking at the same time, you know, just some of the stuff that's being um, spoke on and stuff. So, you know, it's just, I don't know, like, what is your take on some of the things you've been hearing? I mean, for one, you know, I'm going to say this. Uh, mm. I'm just a little bit confused at the fact that this is coming out now. Right. To me, a lot of people, even I knew about some of the things R. Kelly allegedly did, um, you know, years back. Right. And, um, a lot of people. You know, I'm not sure if they realize, but he, he actually went to trial. I think it was 2008, about 10 years ago. Right. Um, mm-hmm. He had about 14 counts on him, and he actually took it to trial. He actually risked his his freedom. He didn't uh, take a plea and uh, actually won in the court of law. Uh, all charges were dismissed, and mm-hmm. uh, he beat that case. So, right. you know, being a thinking man like I am and a guy such as yourself, mm-hmm. I to wonder why now, why in 2019 are we talking about this situation? 
Mm -hmm. uh, when, uh, a lot of people knew in the industry, a lot of people knew in the family that the man had a problem. Right. You know, what is the point of this? Are we, are we ad addressing R. Kelly? Are we looking to rehabilitate him? What's the purpose? Because when you, when you look at a documentary like this, I think it's designed to convict the person publicly. Mm -hmm. you know, because I guess he won in the court of law. Right. But publicly, he's now on trial. And, mm -hmm. you know, that, that was my first question. Um, then, uh, you know, just looking at the documentary, uh, there were some things that stood out to me as I'm watching it. And, and I like to start with the mm -hmm. childhood of Kelly. Okay. That is definitely something I'm glad the documentary touched on that. Right. Uh, the fact that R. Kelly grew up in a very uh, turbulent situation. Right. As a youngster, um, he's what, the third child of four out of four children? Yeah. Somebody. Yeah. He has uh, two brothers, a younger one and an older one, and the sister, who's the oldest. Right. Now, speaking about the sister. Okay. I like to just uh, go over the fact that uh, I'm not sure if a lot of people, like I said, I'm not really sure how privy a lot of you are to the information. I'm not sure if you're, you're like us, where we use multiple sources and we look at different areas and we do research to kind of get a better understanding of not just what the documentary is saying, but the overall story about what happened to R. Kelly in his childhood. And I'm glad the documentary did touch on that. Uh, but a lot of people are not as sympathetic to his situation as they are towards these um, young women that are in the documentary. Mm -hmm. And I am not a R. Kelly sympathizer. I just want to be very clear about that. Mm -hmm. I am a R. Kelly sympathizer. I do not agree with the things that R. Kelly allegedly did. No, not at all. Young ladies. But being the person that I am, I like to look at the whole picture and not a little fragment or a little snapshot of the, the effect. I like to see what the cause is. I like to go to the root. So there was an interview I, I uh, found out about that uh, R. Kelly did. Well, sorry, not R. Kelly. R. Kelly's youngest brother did. Okay. Uh, so on YouTube, and I, I can't remember the young lady interviewed him, but the brother came forward and, and pretty much revealed who was molesting him and R. Kelly. Right. Because you notice R. Kelly did admit that he was sexually abused as a child, but he never gave away who the person was. And I, I was wondering, like, why is that? What is he protecting? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the first thing I thought. Like, why are you protecting this person? But as the brother exposed on this interview, their older sister, um, her name was Teresa Kelly. Yes. Yeah. He alleged that Teresa Kelly molested him and R. Kelly. Right. Kelly, real mm -hmm. young. And pretty much discussed how she was pretty much having sex with her, her younger brothers. Yeah. And sick, man. It's sick. And it, it kind of made me think to myself, hmm, is that the reason he didn't want to say who was molesting him? Mm. Because as the interview went on, the brother was clearly disgusted. He was very emotional, um, broke down a, quite a few times um, right. telling the story about the sister. And he was definitely affected by it. And it, it, it was very disturbing just listening to it. I'm just thinking like, wow, like, this is, this is serious. Yeah. And nobody's talking about this. But what he spoke on, the brother, I really enjoyed his interview because I feel he was being a lot more genuine than some of the other people. Okay. Documentary. And this, by the way, this interview is not on the documentary, but it's a separate interview. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So pretty much what the brother was pretty much saying is that R. Kelly unlike him, 
he was disgusted. But R. Kelly looked at it as like a rite of passage. He almost bragged about it. He almost felt empowered by it. Mm. You know, and you can pretty much say this alleged molestation from the older sister is pretty much the catalyst that that led to all the things that happened with R. Kelly later on in his life. Right. Um, you know, a lot of people aren't aware that he is uh, supposed to be dyslexic and just hearing the story about the sister, it starts to, you start to see the full story about why he was doing some of the things that he was doing with these young ladies, um, locking them in the house, which is something that the brother revealed. That the sister did to the sister him. Do that to them. Um, right. What she would do is she would allegedly, I'm going to say allegedly, when the loss was coming my way, allegedly she would uh, right. uh, babysit them. Mother mm -hmm. had to go to uh, school, had to go to work as well. Mm -hmm. And saying like, what, what she would do is she didn't, she never really came on to the older brother to his knowledge because right. they were close age. But what would happen is she would let, let's say she'll let R. Kelly out to play. Mm -hmm. If R. Kelly and his older brother were allowed to play, he would have to stay inside. Right. And then the days that he would be allowed to go outside, R. Kelly would have to stay inside. Okay. And uh, mind you, the brother said that R. Kelly and his sister are still cool bought a house and everything, and him and his older brother are pretty much on the outs with him. Okay. So that's something that we need to, we need to be discussing. Uh, I feel like a lot of people that watch this documentary are, are, are very reactive in their, in their thinking. Mm, uh, right. I just kind of wanted to point something out as well. The person who put together this documentary is a young lady by the name of uh, Dream Hampton. Right, I've heard of her. Um, yeah, Dream Hampton. She's been in the industry, and um, she wrote the book, the uh, the Black Book, Jay Z, the Black Book. Mm -hmm. um, Around the industry for a while, and um, you know, putting putting in her work or whatever. Yeah. So the red flag for me, um, Cool B, mm -hmm. is this documentary was was put out by Lifetime. Okay. Okay. Lifetime now, Network. Lifetime Network. Mm -hmm. uh, just, just a little history. Um, the Lifetime Network is co-owned by uh, two very big uh, conglomer conglomerates mm -hmm. or enterprises. Uh, one of them being the um, the Hearst Com Communications is one of the owners, mm -hmm. and also the Walt Disney Company is also one of the owners of co-owners of the Lifetime Network. Right. Now, y'all probably thinking, what is the, what is the red flag here? Well, if you do a little research on the Disney company, you're going to see a lot of red flags, and I have an issue with this. There were two journalists. Um, I don't know how long ago they they did some research on the Disney company. And I believe they wrote a book. I can't remember the name. But they did a lot of research and interviewed a lot of former employees at Disney. Right. And uncovered that this is not even funny. This is just, this is, this is crazy. Uh -huh. Disney was rampant with pedophiles. You mean that worked there or that were visiting there? No, that uh, these were people that worked under work, the work, okay. work for the company. The company, right. And, mm -hmm. Yes. And it, it was so disturbing because it wasn't just people it were people it was at different levels of the organization. Right. It was like almost infested. It was like a like with pedophiles from the, the people that actually animated some of the movies. Okay. Down to people that dress up as Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse. Okay. And law enforcement down in florida mm -hmm. even a lot of the law enforcement agencies came out publicly that disney even obstructed some of the investigations some of them a few of them were even homicides oh wow so let me let me just say this today just oh, about a, over an wait. hour ago dream hampton just tweeted out calling out tmz at tmz about mm. the um 
about the video of the there was a young lady that um that they must have taped walking around free and she said why are you guys uh showing this video of this young lady i forget her name but why are you showing this video of this young lady while you know showing that she's free walking mm -hmm. around and what's your relationship with r kelly and his team who do you work for okay for? right but in the same token i'm like dream hampton who are you working for or who are you working with if mm. you're doing this docuseries through life lifetime which is co-owned by the disney company which is had a reputation in history for allegedly having an infestation on their staff of pedophiles? Well, that's a good question, man. Um, and that's what we're doing. We're just posing these questions just to make people think because, um, you know, when you're looking at the documentary, it's just like you're looking at it from one point of view and um and people can get all emotional just you know watching something and and, and get kind of captivated in it but at the same time you have to ask yourself more questions about the documentary as you said earlier like why now you know why are they putting this stuff out now when a lot of this information has been circulating for for years more than more than a decade so I mean, it's like you know why now and then you said something earlier, which I think is important. It's, it's about R. Kelly and his health. Like you said, you know, he needs help. But my question to you is, can you help somebody that's like that and like the way he is for doing these things, well, allegedly doing these things to a lot of these young women? And I'm gonna pose another question to you. You know, a lot of these things are going on. And people knew about these things that were going on, whether it's the people who were working at the high school that he attended, whether it's um, law enforcement that saw R. Kelly going up to the school, and, this, and these are their words, not ours. And also, you know, just anybody who was a friend to him, they knew that he was going on, carrying on, on and going up to these locations where, you know, if you're not working at the school, what are you doing at the school? You know, do you have any relatives that go to the school? Are you checking in on them? Like, what, what's going on? And another question I want to pose to you is, out of all of these things that were happening, where are all these young ladies' parents at? Well, you can't ask me that. <laughs> well, hey, I don't. I'm I, I, these I, questions I, out there, so it's like you know. I, I, you know these are th these are real good questions. Um, and I kind of lost my train of thought with the first question. What was your first question? I just wanted to um, pose. Like, basically, can a person like R. Kelly, can he be helped? Yes, he can. Okay. Absolutely. Because, okay, because a lot of people view him as a pedophile. So... And I don't want, I'm not personally putting this tag on him, but my thing is that can a person like him or a pedophile get help? Yes, they can. Yes, they okay. can. Um, uh, anyone that is a, a pedophile mm -hmm. can help. But the, the, the thing is, is that this person has to seek help. You okay. see, you can't help somebody that doesn't feel like help themselves. Help. Okay. Right. You know, you got to be able to to say to yourself, I need help. Mm -hmm. I need help. And that's the first thing in dealing with something that is like an addiction. Mm -hmm. because this sounds like an addiction to me. And addictions can can change. You can you can overcome these things, but with the right people in your corner, the right people to come down on you and the right people to stay on top of you, more, more importantly. Mm -hmm. But the ultimate decision starts right here in the mind. It starts in the mind. Right. You have to make up your mind that you have a problem. And you see, when I watched this docuseries, mm -hmm. I realized that R. Kelly had a problem, but he wasn't the only problem. Right. You see, 
The problem was all the people involved helped facilitate this. Mm. The um, road manager, what what is his name? Um, Demetrius Smith. Demetrius mm-hmm. Smith. Right. You're an accessory to all this. Yeah. In, in a court of law, if I shot somebody and you were right there, mm-hmm. you didn't pull the trigger, I pulled the trigger, but right. you were right there and you didn't report it, what do you in turn become? Mm-hmm. An accessory to a homicide, an accessory to a shooting. Right. So I is just as guilty as R. Kelly. Right. He's mm-hmm. Guilty. He was actually a, an enabler, and I believe he's the one that forged the age of Aaliyah on the uh, marriage certificate. Um, certificate. Yeah, and that's right. what and that's what he said in the documentary because she was 15 at the time when um, he forged her signature and her date of birth to 18. So you know. And I guess, you know, he said he felt kind of bad about it now, but I'm like, at the end of the day, you knew that this affair or the situation was happening, but yet you still stuck around while it was happening. So why would you then stick around when you knew that this situation was going down for years? Um, You know what that's about, man. you know, when you're on the payroll, right? Getting paid, mm-hmm. you travel the world with this person, it's all gravy, right? So you go, you know, you're gonna ride with them. You're gonna do all right. the things, and you're gonna you're gonna turn your eye, a blind eye, to the things that he's not doing right, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, and just because you didn't participate doesn't mean anything. I just gave you an example of being an accessory, right? To a necessarily have to do anything but the fact you were there mm-hmm. the fact you didn't speak up the fact you didn't intervene and the fact that you aided and abetted this shit makes you just as guilty as R. Kelly and remember yeah. the Leah thing is very early into R. Kelly's career so you yeah. had an opportunity to stop something from snowballing and turn into an avalanche that yeah. eventually came and if you couldn't stop it, you had a way of getting out. But, you know, I can't speak on this man's behalf. You can't speak on this man's behalf. We're kind of outside looking in. But at the same time, we're just posing these questions and putting them out there. And we're going by what these guys are saying within this documentary. Because at this stage of the game, if you're going to tell us that you were forging paperwork or whatever the case may be, I mean, you don't really have to lie about anything else, you know, because that right there, that's a major, that's a major um, situation. And I think that it all goes back to the parenting. Where were Aaliyah's parents in all of this? That was my biggest thing. Mm-hmm. Where, where were all these parents? Right, because that's, were, no, go ahead. So, let me tell you something, man. These people, have to cut the bullshit, mm-hmm. okay? These parents were not good parents. Right. They were not great. Most of them were not good parents. They dropped the ball. Some of them, I believe, were just low-key pimping their, their daughters. They yeah. turned the blind eye because when the gravy train is, is all good, mm-hmm. when everything's all gravy and you're mm-hmm. still collecting, right? Turn it look this way. What kind of parents? Like, okay, I got a niece, right? Right. Mm-hmm. My niece told me I want to be a singer, and let's say somebody, I, I meet a famous singer, singer that can help her maybe with her vocal range or whatever. Right. Maybe. If I introduce them, there's no way that I'm sending my niece to the studio by herself. Right. With supervision, without at least getting the idea of how the studio setting works. Right. Mm-hmm. What do they do? studio. I might not even be a musician. I might not even be into music. But as a parent or as a guardian, I'm going to want to know who's in the studio, um, what are their backgrounds, what normal operating hours of this studio, 
what are you guys doing? What do you guys do in this room? What do you guys do in that room? And I'm like, okay. I'm <laughs> That's real talk, man. I'm going to sit around and observe what's going on in this setting that I don't really know too much about. Right. But when you listen to these parents, when you listen to the story on this docuseries, you listen right. to the young ladies, okay? Mm -hmm. You can see total negligence. It's yeah. not R. Kelly. There's this mm -hmm. negligence all across the boards. This is like a systematic thing. Like it, it was, it was from the people at the school watching this man pull up, picking mm -hmm. up young girls, to the, the officers that let it slide. Because you know, think about it, man. Think about all the celebrities that get pulled over by officers. Right. They get pulled over by officers. It's not that celebrities don't get pulled over by officers. The difference is with a lot of celebrities, the officers want to take pictures with them. Right. And society has this thing with celebrities mm -hmm. where they get away with a lot. They get away with a lot more than the average person. Go ahead. I'm going to tell you something, man. And, you know, I'm just going to put it out there. If R. Kelly went to a predominantly white high school and he was pulling up to that high school with all of these white students, Right, right. And, and, and bringing them along with him and hanging out with them. I really think, in my heart of all hearts, that he would not have gotten away with that at all. There wouldn't have been no blind eye, nothing. They would, he'd probably be in jail, to be honest with you, man. So then you have to look at the community as a whole. I'm like, okay, this was your golden boy. And... You know, you want to, you don't want to say that, you know, he was coming around or he's pumping money into the school program. or It could be anything, but you knew it was happening. You couldn't have a conversation with him and be like, look, this is not cool. We don't really want you up here, you know, because you, what you're doing is, is not really good. And it, and, it, and it's doing more harm, if anything with this community, with this school. But did that happen? Some people said that, you know, I think his music teacher was like, well, you know, these girls are a little bit too young for you or whatever the case may be. So she probably, more than likely, she probably pulled him to the side and said something. But at the end of the day, you know, it, it is what it is. You know, it, it's just like he was still doing whatever worked for him. So it is not very true. And let me tell you something. One thing I learned about in life is power affords you a lot more than when you don't have power. Right. Money, power is something very real. Okay. Right. People don't become, don't want to become, well, people don't only become wealthy because they have a lot of money and stuff like that. Really, the ultimate goal of, of becoming wealthy is to have power and sway. And what happened was, R. Kelly's, he's coming up and he's becoming a bigger and bigger artist and more and more hits are starting to, you know, manifest. He's becoming more and more powerful. He's becoming more recognized. Right. People get drunk on power. Oh, yeah. People get drunk on power. You know, they, they, you know the saying, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Mm -hmm. So... It was a complex that he probably had that allowed him to go around and, and people that normally would speak up in situations such as, the, um, you know, the situation with R. Kelly as far as him going to schools and, mm -hmm. and, and these young ladies at his house, they become lax based on the celebrity. Right. They, don't, they don't go at them the same way they will go at a regular person who wasn't as known. If he was a regular person, this would have been exposed a long time ago right. because nobody was on the payroll. Mm -hmm. you no, know, nobody would be on the payroll in that situation. But you right. see, you have money, you have power, you have platinum plaques, you have vehicles. Mm -hmm. People tend to become a lot more lax. Yeah, it's true. And this documentary should show how we as a society in America has failed and has failed the people most important to us, which is our youth. Right. 
these 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 young ladies were failed by R. Kelly. Mm -hmm. They were failed by their parents. Mm -hmm. They were failed by the lawmakers. They were failed all across the board. Okay, but at the same time, these young ladies were of an age where they had common sense. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. They knew right from wrong. Mm -hmm. And because of that power, because of that influence, they decided to go chase something that they had no business chasing. Right. A lot of young ladies on this documentary. <laughs> let me tell you, <laughs> I have a friend of mine, right? Mm -hmm. Her name is Stephanie. Shout out to Steph. Mm -hmm. Now, when she watched, she said she only watched about a half an hour of the first one because she said she couldn't really do it after right. a while. Because she's sitting there and she's a, she's a woman. She's, she was like, I was a teenager at one point. A teenage mm -hmm. female. And I'm watching this documentary and all I could think to myself is, I know girls like this in high school. I knew girls that were fat. Right. right. said, hell, if Genuine would have came up to me at 16 year old, yeah, I'm busting it open. And I was a virgin. Dude. If it was Gen if it was genuine, it gen I'm like, hey, genuine. And yeah, I know it's wrong and he's too old, but shoot, I'm about to bust it open for genuine. <laughs> Man. So she was like, at the end of the day, when she was watching it, she was like, Are y'all serious right now? These bitches was fucking. That's what she told me. Yeah, like, I mean fucking. Yeah. I, if you think about it, you know, we we were both teenagers. And at the end of the day, usually girls our age when we were teenagers usually didn't talk to guys around our age. They exactly. always spoke to guys that were older, who had the money, who had the cars, who right. would pick them up or whatever the case may be. So if you, let's say uh, 16, 17 years old, usually these dudes are probably like 23, 24, 25, like, like a R. Kelly's age around the time he was uh, married to Aaliyah. So it's like, it's not uncommon. But my thing is that I just feel the parenting, you have to kind of be hands-on and you have to have more of um, a, a, a grip on where your kids has. Both kids. Especially, both. especially a teenage female. Right, yes. This, yes. this is what I'm not understanding. Men and women. Young men and women, but female is definitely important. Especially because they're way more vulnerable. Yeah. They're way more vulnerable, yep. okay, as a female. These emotions, you know, they say in your teenage years, it's, it's like the chemical reaction in your brain. It's almost like teenagers are like going through a temporary state of insanity. The way mm -hmm. you have noticed the way a teenager reasons is totally off because there's yeah. a chemical imbalance. The right. body is. Is, is prepping itself for reproduction. Right. Okay. So when when it comes to our daughters, man, this this documentary to me wasn't about no R. Kelly. Right. It was more than that. It was way more. more. Yeah. It's y'all sitting up here. Oh, um, I watched this guy, um, the um, the artist by the name of Black. Mm -hmm. They actually posted. I believe it was today. He um he shut down some um R. Kelly supporter because what he did was he posted um he said uh he said and I'm I'm gonna read this uh, this surviving R. Kelly series really has me pissed to start the new year mm -hmm. and then he tweeted fucking disgusting okay mm -hmm. all right that's fine I I understand that so what happened was a uh, 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 one of his fans by the name of I guess it's Count Skill Nine. Mm -hmm. um, in response, he played. He paved the way for you. Um, still, trash or not, this the reason you're here. Mm. Uh, Black responded, "Bitch, I ain't asked you shit." <laughs> Just like that, huh? <laughs> Just like yeah. that. So, like, whenever I see a, 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 a someone like an artist like that talking like that. Mm -hmm. I can tell that they're just having a reaction. They're, they're reacting to the story. They're reacting to the documentary. And you can tell that yeah. they haven't really done any other research. They haven't really looked into the fact that this guy's past 
is pretty fucked up. You know, right. this this guy lost his virginity to probably allegedly lost his virginity to his sister. Yeah. Old sister. Yeah. You know, that's not something that happens every day to the average person. Right. And we're not making excuses for his behavior at all. But we're no. just saying that, you know, it just when you hear the backstory, certain things become a little bit more clear than they were. That's all we're saying. And um, you know, and I just think that when a lot of people are really kind of getting at him now, but he's not the only one, you know. There have been other people, other musicians that have done it. Um, they say Elvis did it. Um, and if you even look at the, the Kevin Spacey situation, man, Be gone. where it was the dude named um, Anthony Rapp, he was the actor, and um, he said that in 1986, when he was 14 years old, Kevin Spacey made um, a sexual advance towards him. And he was at, I think they, they were at Kevin Spacey's apartment for a, a party or whatever. And he was 14 years old at the time. And at this, he was one of the first people, I believe, that came out with these um, accusations about Kevin Spacey. But then since then, there had been like 15 other people that came forward and said, well, Kevin Spacey did this or he did that. So I don't really think these, allegedly did these things, but I don't really think that out of all of these 15 people that are stepping forward with these stories, there has to be some truth in the, in the mix of that. Um, but the thing about it is, you know, Kevin Spacey, he says he doesn't recall. You know, he apologized to him, and this, is, and this is when he came out as being gay. But the thing is, I remember looking at some articles and things like that. Right. From um, different, um, or in different interviews where there were people who were in the gay community that said, come on, Kevin, just come out the closet already. And, you know, you're hiding it. Just be who you want to be. And this is like at least two years before this whole thing was uh, coming out about what he did and, and all of that. But once again, the parents of Anthony Rapp, like, we're, we're, like we're, where are his parents at? You're 14 years old right. at, a, at an adult party where there's drinks flowing around and everything. At least if you're going to be at a party and you're an actor at a young age, yo, where's your mom? Where's your dad? Where is that, um, where's that guardianship? You know, I'm, I'm not going to send my son or my daughter to a party where there's going to be adults there and there's hardly any, um, you know, young adults or, or kids his age there. Like, what, what would you be at that party doing? Exactly. I mean, come on, man. This is, this documentary should really be exposing this society for what it enables people that are not all there in their psyche, what right. it allows children to be exposed to. Right. This documentary ain't just about no R. Kelly. Oh, fuck R. Kelly, fuck his supporters. No, fuck you. Right. Because a lot of you cats that speaking up in the industry, y'all watched a lot of shit go down like that. Yeah. Okay, you know about homeboy from uh, B2K, how they silenced him? Yeah, they were talking about that. Like um, they said, his, his cousin, allegedly molested him and um a lot of people are getting on his head uh what is his name uh chris stokes stokes or something like that and a lot of people are kind of getting on him now because you know b2k they have a tour coming up and they were like well they're back together and they're kind of giving him heat about that and he was like yo look it didn't happen that never happened you know and if he says it didn't happen i'm not saying it did or it didn't but that's something that he's going to have to be faced with down the line because he knows what happened and the accusers know what happened. People behind closed doors, some of them may know what happened, but the general public, we weren't there. So we can't speak on, on his behalf or their behalf. We're only going by what the information is that we're given. But, you know, um, I want to say, too, about the whole R. Kelly thing, you know, he has a new album coming out this year, 2019. And also, 
his uh what was his his uh his music has jumped in sales right now yeah. and, and also i mean i just find it a little a little ironic that sparkle mm -hmm. right right entry oh just dropped a just dropped a single right you know what i'm saying so what is this really about right what is this really about you know i always want to know what the agenda is right mm -hmm. caught up in um sensationalism right he caught up in all that i want to know right. what that is going on pardon me mm -hmm. mike is over here mm. getting ready to take a fall <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I, that's what i want to know i want to know what the real agenda is right and why are people having a real conversation about how this is not about R. Kelly, but it's about our society and how it's failing our youngsters. Right. This would just be about, you know, you sitting up there saying fuck R. Kelly and all this shit. To me, it's just dismissive because at the end of the day, you ain't you ain't changing shit because there's some other kid going out out there in the world that's going through the same thing. And you're not gonna pay no attention to him. Right. He's not being molested by R. Kelly. He's being molested by Uncle Whoever. Right. Uncle whoever. Right. And. Okay. And this. Right. And who is going to be that child's voice? You know, because sometimes it's kind of sickening because some of the the parents of these victims or these um, young children, I don't want to call them victims because, you know, it's not it's not their fault at all. But the thing is that, you know, some of these parents shame on you because you can't just have anybody around your kid, for one. And two, if your kid is telling you something, your child should never have to be afraid to speak up to you, you know, because you're the yes. closest link. It's, it's, it should be nothing between I'm, I'm, I'm the glad you, let's, let's touch on that. The child. Let's, let's touch on that. You touched on a real good, you just made a hmm. Um. Parents, sorry, I just got a phone call. No, sorry. Parents out there really need to start having a serious conversation with their youngsters. Right. Because what I'm noticing is a lot of these children or the youngsters or, you know, these young adults mm -hmm. have never been prepped. Right. For that type of conversation. Right. Why, yeah. why aren't parents prepping their children? For situations that can happen to them like that, right? Mm -hmm. That in itself is a, a, a form of child abuse or neglect. Right. You should all have a sit down with your youngsters, especially when they can talk, right? And be able they're able to communicate with you, right? You should be able to sit down with your youngster and say, "Listen, if anyone touches you here, right? Touches you there makes you feel uncomfortable." Feel free to tell me immediately. Right. And don't be embarrassed because it's not your fault. Right. To have these conversations with the youngsters. Why aren't parents having these conversations with the youngsters? You know what I think? I think personally, I feel a lot of these parents want to shield their kids from this stuff and kind and kind of, you know, play like it doesn't happen, even though it, it does happen more than what people think. But it's like, well, it's not going to happen to my kids, so I don't have to speak on it. But the thing is, if you look at this situation now, on things being the way they are, and I don't know if you saw this, it was a, um, it's, it's a parent, two parents to a kid, he's 11 years old. Now this 11 year old dresses up in drag, right? Now he's on, um, I think it was USA Today or, the, or, the, or the one of those morning shows where he is flamboyantly dancing around, falling out on the ground, and he's looked at as a sensation, right? But yet the parents are the ones dressing him up like this, and the parents even have this guy going to, or this, not a guy, this young kid going to 
adult clubs, adult gay clubs, dancing on tables and dancing on the stage while men are throwing money at him. This is a fact. Oh, wow. This is a fact. So my thing is that what some people are Great. shielding from their kid, their parents are bringing this to their kid. Now, my thing is that, and I'm not knocking anybody who's gay or transgender or anything like that, but my thing is that, when you have, no, not at all. But when you have a kid that's, that your parents, the parents are bringing him to the club and he's dancing with little booty shorts on and, and, and an outfit and men are throwing dollars at him, what comes next after that? Let's just imagine if this kid's parents weren't around and they just let him go to the club. What do you think is going to happen with this kid afterwards? You know? So it's just like, once again, you got you to gotta question the parenting because everything starts at home. So, everything. I mean, everything starts at home. Look at R. Kelly being molested mm -hmm. by his older sister, allegedly. Right. I mean, that started at home. So, like I said, man, this is really an indictment on the society that we're in. Right. And we really need to really take a look at ourselves. Mm -hmm. Take a look at the things that we tell our children and also right. look at the things we're not telling our children. Right. Stop making children idolize celebrities. Mm -hmm. Stop allowing your children to idolize celebrities. Right. Because they idolize celebrities and they get around these celebrities, guess what? It lets their guards down. Right. And uh, we just need to be mindful of that. Yes, it's fucked up what R. Kelly did, but there's a lot of blame to go around. We're not excusing it. Right. But for all the other people that were in earshot, to all the people that turned the blind eye, you're just as fucking guilty too. It, and your name should be on a documentary as well. Right. So let's uh let's let's not forget that so anybody tuning in man i'm your host mr mercy i'm your man cool breeze and this is the radio cast man we we just having a little dis documentary uh discussion on the uh r kelly documentary series um for anybody that wants to email us uh mm -hmm. show topics any ideas you know you just want to drop us a line or whatever um our email is sin radio wave at gmail.com again that's sin s-i-n radio wave at gmail.com make sure you follow us on ig at sin radio cast mm -hmm. uh, check us out on there uh we're looking to retrieve the the account uh, we're working on that but in the meantime in between time um just just follow us there you can also follow me at uh at mr mercy 516 again mm -hmm. that's at mr mercy 516 and uh cool yeah, uh, my Instagram is the real cool B, and also like our YouTube page and subscribe. That's Sin Radio Cast, and hit that so, notification bell as well, man. We out here, we're just uh, here to discuss the real topics. Uh, I know we said last show we we're going to do the freshman guide to travel, but this uh, docu series was such a, a hot topic that we decided we're going to. Uh, let that episode be the third episode. And mm -hmm. also, uh, we're going to be doing an episode on something kind of new that they're not really talking about in the uh, in the media right now, which is uh, gender neutral birth certificates. Mm -hmm. We're going to be doing that as well, which is, uh, you know, it's something that we definitely need to uh, bring to the light. Uh, a lot of people are not really talking about this. Mm -hmm. And I feel it, it will be a doing the listeners a disservice if we you know didn't cover this um this story that's not really being pushed by the mainstream media no surprise there right mm -hmm. so uh radio just want y'all to to know that we're here for for the the topics that people aren't really discussing we like to also touch on the the big topics such as the the, the one we we discussed today but we also like to uh, talk about the things that are not being talked about. And uh, this channel is going to be one of those channels where you're going to find a wealth of information. And, and we're definitely working on 
uh, bringing you some future shows that uh, will definitely add uh, definitely. value to life. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not all about us. It's really about the people that listen and, and follow us and and uh, listen to what we have to say. And we appreciate all the people that's that subscribed. And, you know, we are looking forward to seeing you next week. Um, till then, I'm about to sign off. Mr. Mercy, shout out to the world. Shout out to all my people out there. Shout out to my man who will be over there on the West Coast. Mm. You know, and then um, we'll be back soon. All right. Peace. Peace.